All right, today we are going to be forging a basic billet of Damascus. Uh, I've had some requests on my Instagram and my Facebook pages for people uh, looking to just figure out how do you make a bar of steel? Uh, very simple, uh, plain, maybe we're, we might even break it up in a few pieces at the end, uh, do some random Damascus, and then maybe we'll ladder pattern it or twist it. Okay, Damascus steel is really just two different alloys of steel forge welded together. So I've got some pieces of 15 and 20 steel cut up, and now I'm gonna chop up some 1075. Uh, I usually use 1080 or 1075, um, either one or about the same. 1075 is what I've got for this project. Okay, as you've just seen at the chop saw, chopped up a bunch of pieces of steel. But they're not all one type of steel. You have to have two, at least two types of steel to make Damascus. You just do one, and you weld all those together, it just becomes one piece of steel. So I'm gonna alternate these layers. We always have thick layers on the outside. We don't want a really thin bar of steel on the outside. So as you can see, that's a thick layer, and then I doubled up the 15 in 20. Another thick one, double, and then I mixed it up a little. I got a 1080, a single 10, 15 in 20, another 1080, and then on this side of the billet, I went thick. So these are all stacks of all five of these right here are 15 and 20, 1080, a big thick stack, and another big thick stack of 15 and 20. The point is here, it can be random. You can do whatever you want. It adds excitement, it adds interest to the blade. But I did not grind any mill scale off any of them. Uh, these were pretty clean, but I don't grind mill scale off. It's an unnecessary step that a lot of guys spend waste time uh, doing. So now, these are all put together. I'm gonna run a weld down each end of this bar, or of this billet of steel. I'm gonna weld, run a couple short welds down here. These thin layers like to try and buckle on the outside. So if I just do a little tack on each side, it keeps that from happening. And then we'll weld a handle on it and we'll be good to go. Okay, here we go. This is all welded up and ready to go. Got a handle on it, the end's welded up. And now we're gonna go into a bucket of kerosene. Right over here, I do not use flux. Uh, we used to use flux a lot back in the old days, but uh, I do kind of a dry weld with just kerosene. So we're gonna go right into here. It's still hot from welding, the kerosene won't catch on fire or anything like that. And I'm just gonna let it sit in there while I start my forge and we get ready to go. All right, when lighting a forge, it's imperative that you have air first and then you put your fire in and then gas last. Uh, you do not want to put a fire into a filled up pot of gas. We'll get an explosion. So here we go, turn the fan on, get that going, put it in and then we turn the gas on. And it's running. Okay, as that bar heats up in there, you can see the outside layers are red hot already. And if I hadn't attacked those edges down, those layers would just be bulged out really wide right now. So those tack welds are holding those layers down. But we gotta let that red soak all the way through the center of that billet. And we don't wanna be in a hurry. A good friend of mine, Devin Thomas, always said, when you think you're ready to uh, squeeze it, wait 10 minutes, which we're not gonna maybe wait 10, but we're gonna wait a little bit here and let, let a good amount of temperature get through there. We're gonna be forge welding at about 2300 degrees. That steel's looking shiny in there. 
it's telling me that it's ready to forge weld. It's just, uh, it's at that sweet spot. I really like it. But what we don't want to do is go to that press and just over squeeze it. I'm going to give it a few nice squeezes on the faces, turn it maybe on edge just a little bit, and we're just not going to get too carried away on this first one just to get this initial forge weld done. So here we go. Get the press and the rolling mill on. Yeah, it's looking good. So as you can see, these lines are all running through that bar of steel right there. You can see all our layers. I got a nice little squeeze on it. That should be a solid bar of steel. If I was to stop right now, you should be able to cut that in half and it'd be solid. That's all it took for the forge weld. So now we can get it hot again and get a little more aggressive and start drawing it out. We've got this pressed down pretty good, uh, but I, now I'm going to go to my rolling mill. If you don't have a rolling mill, we can just keep pressing or we could just keep working on the power hammer. The rolling mill, though, is going to really stretch this bar out fast, and it doesn't grow it widthwise at all this way, which is exactly what I want. I just want to get length. So we'll get it hot and we'll head to the rolling mill. Okay, we are done with our first initial forge segment here. Got a nice long bar, it's perfectly even all the way up. And you can see all these layers in here, right along that edge. There's 19 layers, but we used 33 individual pieces of steel to get 19 layers. So those layers that were stacked up with four or five pieces of steel only count as one layer. So 33 pieces of steel, 19 layers, and there we go. We're gonna cut this bar up into pieces and restack it. What matters is that whatever you are, that you're even all the way up. We don't want it thin at the top, thick at the bottom. All right, so now we gotta let it cool. We're gonna grind this scale all off, cut it up, restack it, and go at the forge again. After the bar cooled down, I went ahead and I ground off the mill scale, or the scale from the forging, uh, which you can see that scale still left on there. Uh, ground that off. That side's ground entirely. I stopped short on the ends here just a little bit because I'm lazy and the less amount of grinding I have to do as possible is the best. So uh, th those, those ends are going to be my outside layers on this restack, so they don't need to be ground off. So less time grinding. Uh, saves me some steel and saves me some time. So I'm going to cut this bar up into six pieces and uh, we'll restack it and we'll go back to the forge. Okay, we have chopped up these bars of steel. They're all ground. And then I always grind off my ends, polish them off and make sure that we don't see like a nasty crack or some line that didn't weld. But these look really nice. As you can see there, 
but you can't see the pattern in them, right? So all we do here, we take that polished end, dip it in that, that's ferric chloride mixed with water, pull it out, and look at that. And that little round splotch you see in the middle is just stuff, water droplet or something that was on the steel. It's not actually in the steel, but what you can see as we do another one here, I'll dip this one. You can actually see the variation. I got more of that stuff on there. You can see the variation in the thickness of the, uh, of the layers. So you can see we got a dark one right in the middle and we got a couple thick lighter ones and then we got high layers here and high layers here as far as thin layers. So now I'll just stick these both in together. We'll take those out and what we end up with as we stick all these together into a block all those layers, each bar of that steel is 19 layers. So now we have 19 times six. So we're around 115. Anyway, there you go, that shows us our pattern in our steel. So now we just need to weld that block up, get them all evened out, weld them up, and then we'll forge weld that into a solid block. Okay, here's what's fantastic about making a big block of steel. We started with a bunch of steel because now we have options. I don't need this whole block of steel for one blade. So we're gonna go chop this piece off and we're gonna draw it out and show you what a Damascus bar of steel looks like. This section here, we're gonna actually save for another YouTube video on how to twist Damascus in my really cool twisting machine. You're gonna wanna check that out. Okay, so we just chopped this bar in half, welded a handle on it real quick, and now we're gonna use that rolling mill. We're gonna roll this bar out. And it's pretty hard to see right now. I, if I get the light just right, I can see the layers running through that bar. It's gonna be really cool. Okay, that is a bar of Damascus steel. There's about 114 layers in that. Uh, we've got a beautiful finish on the sides from that rolling mill. It's as smooth as it would come brand new from the factory. Um, you can see the pattern, the lines going down the edge. So when this bar cools, we'll go in, we'll do a little reveal, a little etching reveal. We'll grind them layers off and show you what it looks like. From here, I can do anything I want. I can chop that bar in half and make a couple hunting knives. I can make a big chopper, camp knife, a kitchen knife. Uh, it's endless. Um, I could roll this all the way out and make 15 folding knives if I wanted to. So the point is it's endless what you can do with the Damascus steel. This is just a basic kind of random pattern, uh, nothing fancy, but your options are endless. So this is this random pattern, kind of mild wood grain Damascus, whatever you want to call it, uh, that we made. We ground off just kind of an end here so we could do kind of a reveal. So no patterning was done to this bar of steel. We just basically took straight layers, started off with, what, 19 layers? We ended up with 114. Uh, we kind of had some randomness to it though, some thick, some thin. So if we pull this out of here, this is what we've got. It looks pretty cool. 
And now what's going to be really cool is after we forge a blade in this and we beat that edge down and we have those hammer marks in there and we deform this steel, it's going to make those layers go all kind of crazy in there and you're going to get kind of a, they call it a wood grain look or a random pattern to it. Um, and they're not going to be quite so straight. Right now we're just grinding across the layers that are going down this bar. They're going through this bar this way. And we're just cutting across those layers. Once we beat on that with that hammer, it makes those layers go up and down and move and you get a really neat look. So that is how you make simple carbon Damascus steel. All you got to do now is go home and get after it. <music>